David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, I am often asked what my favorite inks are, and I, I've thought about doing a top 10 list. Uh, but if I did that, then there'd just be lots of blues, since I, I love lots of blues. So half the list would just be blues, uh, and that wouldn't really make for an interesting list. So this isn't a top 10 list. Uh, what I've decided to do is give myself a challenge. Uh, and that challenge was that if I was only to use 10 inks for the remainder of my days, what would those 10 inks be? Um, I need to have a variety of colors in order to meet any needs that I might have, uh, as well as matching up well with any pen in my collection. Uh, and so it was tougher than I thought, but I did it. Uh, and what I'm going to do today is go over the inks that I considered for the list uh, and then show you what I ultimately ended up choosing. Um, I feel it ended up being uh, pretty well rounded uh, and I could live with only these 10 inks. In the end, uh, the main purpose of this video is to show you a bunch of inks that I care for. Uh, I know that the sheer number of inks available on the market today is overwhelming. And sometimes it helps just to see a bit about uh, different colors, uh, colors of ink. Um, I would recommend purchasing uh, any of the inks that I show you today. So maybe this video will help give you some ideas of uh, things to add to your ink wish list. Uh, the only restrictions that I put on this list for me was that uh, any ink that I chose to make the final 10 had to be uh, readily available for purchase as of the taping of this video. Uh, okay, let's take a closer look at some inks, and in order to do so, let's go over here to camera two. To begin with, uh, I feel that every collection should have at least one really solid black. Now, when I started off in the fountain pen hobby, my very first bottle of ink I owned was this Parker Quink. Um, it's a very serviceable ink uh, and, and served me well. Uh, and then the, the next bottle of ink I purchased was this Conway Stewart Bodeman. Uh, again, both of these are very serviceable and serviced me very well for uh, a number of years. But other blacks I feel are very solid are the Pelican Edelstein Audix, uh, as well as uh, Mont Blanc Mystery Black, uh, and there's also uh, the Sailor Kiwaguru. So, which of these did I pick? Well, Conway Stewart Bodeman is really uh, not readily available, so that one's eliminated. Um, I have a fondness for the Quink, but it's not the best of the bunch. Uh, the Edelstein is great, but it comes in a third for me, which leaves these two. Uh, Mont Blanc Mystery Black and Sailor Kiwaguru. And I picked the Kiwaguru. Uh, I'll admit it's been quite some time since I've inked up a pen with a black ink, but when I do, uh, this is the black I find myself reaching for. It's it's saturated without being too dense. Um, it's very well behaved and just a solid ink. So that is ink number one. Next up, uh, I you know I've really enjoyed orange inks lately, uh, and I have a few that I rotate through. Uh, first, we have this Ackerman Orange Bovin. Uh, then there is Mont Blanc's Lucky Orange. Uh, and then uh, there is the Papier Plume, House of the Rising Sun. Uh, and then next up is a, a brand new ink from Tashia called Dye Dye, which I'm really liking. Um, that uh, Now, for the most part, I kind of lean towards bright tangerine oranges. And while I really like the Papier Plume, uh, if I was only to have one orange, I'd want it to be one of those tangerines. So that's a difficult cut for me to make, but I would eliminate that one. Um, it's a very good ink, though. Uh, the Tashia is a bit too new for me. I've played around with it a little bit, but I haven't really put it through its paces, which leaves these two. Uh, again, a very difficult choice, but I'm gonna go with the Mont Blanc Lucky Orange. Uh, it's a solid saturation uh, that uh, will provide a, a little bit of shaving. And it's the palette range, uh, in the palette range of the oranges that I really draw to. Okay, next up is a color that I don't use a great deal, but I felt it was needed to round out this list, and that is green. Uh, for a color I only use in uh, two or three pens, I do have a number of bottles that I do care for. Um, to begin with, uh, we have the Roaring Klingner Ver Verduna or Verdura, excuse me. Um, I've paired this ink up with my Green Stripe Pelican M1000. I think it's a good match for that pen. Uh, also, Monteverde Green is decent. Um, I, I really like the Pilot, Pilot Eroshizuku Kujaku. 
uh, even though that's more of a blue green. Uh, then uh, Mont Blanc Irish Green is a classic. Uh, and I also enjoy the bright pop of Diamine Apple Glory. Uh, and then uh, we have something like Colorverse Schrodinger, which would be a nice addition to any collection. Now, while I love Kujaku, it's a bit blue-green, so that's got to say goodbye. And the, uh, uh, and the Monteverde and the Roaring Klingner uh, that, uh, they're, and the Schrodinger, they're great, but they don't make the cut either. So we have Apple Glory and the, uh, and the Mont Blanc Irish Green. You know, I'm going to have to go with the Irish green. Uh, I, I do like the pop, um, but if I, of the Apple Glory, but if I only have to pick one, I'm going to kind of go with a more classic uh, Mont Blanc. It's a classic Irish green. It's very well behaved, um, and it really matches the pens that I use green ink in, mainly the aforementioned uh, Pelican M1000 and uh, also I'm in Vis Visconti Millionaire, which is uh, made from a green marble. Okay. On to color number four, and that is a blue-black. Um, I mentioned previously, but that for quite some time, uh, all I used was black ink. Then I got really crazy and ventured into the blue blacks. I know, that's really crazy. Uh, but there's a lot of great ones out there. And the six that I considered for this, uh, the first one was Aurora Blue Black. Uh, then I had a Diamine Midnight. There's Noodler's 54th Massachusetts. There's Kiyu no Oto uh, Anobi, or Anoibi. Uh, the Bung Box 4B, and Diamine 1864 Blue Black. Uh, this was a tough choice, because I use all of these inks on a regular basis. But um, in the end, I needed to go with the one that I reach for more than any of the others, and that would be the bung box 4b um yeah i just feel it has the right balance when it comes to a blue black not too blue not too black uh, bung box has some great inks and 4b is definitely one of them on to color number five it's another color that i don't use that often but i felt it was needed to uh, be represented within this top 10 li list of inks and that is a red uh, and here are some of my favorites uh, we have diamine matador uh, there's pilot oroshizuku momiji uh, something i reviewed recently krishna jungle volcano uh, there's the diamine poppy red Let's do that over here. Uh, there is the Birmingham pen, Fred Rogers cardigan red. Uh, there's the Levenger pomegranate. And then there is Thornton's red. Now, while I'd very much enjoy this Levenger pomegranate, if I only had one red in my collection, it would need to be more of a traditional red, so that one's gone. Um, the same would go for Krishna Jungle Volcano. Love it, but not red enough. Uh, Momiji isn't quite saturated enough for me uh, as some of the other ones, so that one's gone. Uh, Matador is more of a, a blood red, uh, and for a single red, I'd like something with a little bit more pop, which eliminates the softness also of the cardigan red. And between the Thorntons and the Diamine, uh, you know what, I would have to go with the Poppy Red. Uh, it's a real bold red, uh, and if I'm needing to use a red ink, it's typically because I'm looking for something bold, and this definitely fits the bill. Okay, five down and five to go. Uh, next up is a color that I've always said is one of my least favorite colors in general, and that is purple. Uh, it's strangely, it's strange enough though that I, I've not really cared for the color, but there are several purple inks that I really have grown uh, uh, fond of, and I find myself reaching for uh, these more and more. Uh, maybe I need to cho choose a, a new least favorite color. So what are the inks that I've uh, pretty much turned me around on purple? Well, we have Pilot Orochizuku Yamabudo. Uh, we have the Seitz Kreisnach Dark Orchid. There's the Lamy Dark Lilac. Then there is the Birmingham Andy Warhol Pop Art Purple. Uh, there is the Cross Violet. Uh, and then finally, there is the Pilot Orochizuku Mirasaki Shikapu. Uh, 
All of these inks are are great in their own right, but I can if I can only afford to have one purple on this list, um, it can't be too dark or too light. And in the end, it comes down to one of two Orochizuku colors, which are the Yamabudo and the Murasaki Shikapu, which are, are really two different shades of purple, kind of more of a reddish purple and more of a, a traditional purple. Uh, and so which of these would you choose? I mean, you really can't go wrong with either of these inks. Uh, it really kind of hurts my feelings to get rid of one of those. So uh, I am going to go with the Yamabudo for no other reason that it's a fun name to say, Yamabudo. But uh, it's really a great ink and well behaved as well. I like all the pirate Orochizuku inks uh, or the, the way that they behave, but I'm, I enjoy this purple. On to color number seven, and that is a brown. And brown is another color that took me a while to come around to. For the longest time, uh, I didn't have that many browns that I cared for, but it seems like over the last couple of years, I found some really great browns that match well to a wide variety of my pens. Uh, and here are some of my favorites. Uh, we have the Groff Von Paper Castell Hazelnut Brown. There is the SBRE Brown. There's the Bung Box Piano Mahogany, the Franklin Christoph Terra Firma, there's the uh, Diamine Ancient Copper, uh, and then finally there's the Mont Blanc Toffee Brown. Mont Blanc just keeps showing up on this list. It seems like just about every one of their offerings is just a really solid color. Uh, and while I like the Toffee Brown, uh, there's others I care for a little bit more. Same goes for the uh, Faber Castell Hazelnut Brown. And while the uh, Franklin Christoph is one of my top five favorite inks in my entire collection, since this has been discontinued, it must be removed. Uh, same goes for the SBRE Brown. It's a great lighter brown, but it's not currently available. Which leaves us these two. Uh, Diamine Ancient Copper is a color that I've been pairing a lot with uh, some of my copper pens and some of my Arco pens, and, and I feel it really matches well. But on this list, um, it would come down to a, the uh, Bung Box Piano Mahogany, uh, which is just an ink I adore. I, I feel that it matches really well with a variety of pens, and I enjoy the mahogany brown more than the straight, straight traditional brown. Okay, so that leaves us with only one color left. It's a color that I care for greatly, so much that I felt that I needed to pick not one, not two, but uh, three to be on this list. And that color, of course, is blue. Um, I find myself using blues much more often than any other color. Uh, with each of the other colors on this list, I could live with only one, but I really couldn't live with only one blue. And here, are some of my favorites. Now, first of all, I could have listed 20 great blues, but I whittled it, whittled it down to only eight. And those are uh, a Visconti blue, the Omas blue, uh, a KWZ Azure number four, the Robert Oster Bondi blue, then there is the Pilot Orochizuku Konpeki, uh, Ackerman Shocking blue, the Private Reserve Naples Blue, and Kobe number 17. It was hard to limit this to only eight, but uh, it's even tougher to get down to three. Um, first of all, uh, in keeping with my availability rules, uh, out goes the Omos Blue, since that's no longer available. Uh, and then Private Reserve has gone through a lot of changes the last couple of years, and this was an older bottle, so I'm going to set this one aside as well. Uh, the KWZ is a bit on the darker side uh, compared to some of the others, so uh, that's gone. Uh, so then we have three, the uh, Kobe number 17 and the Konpeki and the uh, Bondi Blue, which are all fairly similar. And, and while all three of these are great, um, I have to go with... Konpeki, which is quite possibly my favorite ink in my collection. So in regard to the blues, that leaves me with three. The Ackerman Shocking Blue, uh, which is a little bit darker and has some amazing sheen to it. Uh, the Visconti Blue, which is more of a saturated traditional blue. And then the more colorful pop of the Orochizuku Konpeki. So here you have 
the inks that I could live with for the rest of my life. Uh, that uh, if I had to cut, you know, cut my collection down to only these ten bottles, uh, you know, in the in the end, I'd be happy with this list. Uh, I could live with these inks for the rest of my days and feel satisfied. Uh, I think there's enough variety here that I wouldn't get bored or, or sick of any of these. Uh, if you want to, in the comments, feel free to let me know what uh, would make your top ten list. I'd be interested to see what uh, would make your the cut on your lists. So until next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.